Oh my god, it's working! It's actually working! Welcome to Robot Factory. Today we're going to go through a little bit of tweaking on this Alunar M505 3D printer. The big thing with this printer, and it, you get what you pay for, right? Bought a $250 printer out of the box, shipped from overseas. I have spent, I'm going to say, 50 hours working on bed leveling to get maybe four prints out of the thing. That, that's just not working for me. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to make some modifications to the bed to make it more stable and consistently level. Out of the box, this bed is a just a real simple aluminum plate. We're looking at an eighth of an inch, about three millimeter thick aluminum plate. And it comes with the heating element, at least mine did, came with the heating element already affixed to the back of the plate. The problem that I'm finding, and we can see this in some of this scoring mark, is that the bed itself, the metal plate for the bed, as it heats and cools, is getting warped. Now that's understandable, right? Aluminum, as we heat it up, as we cool it down, it is going to flex. It's a piece of metal, it conducts heat. That metal is going to cause, or uh, that, that heat's gonna cause the metal to, to warp and bend on us. Problem that we have with that is because this bed is only an eighth of an inch thick, heating it up to the point where it's pushing 100 degrees C through the, up to the surface, is that we're getting a lot of warpage. So through the time of making a print, the bed is changing shape on me. That's not working. I can get the bed completely leveled, and then by the time I actually am done printing, the bed level has changed. I can't immediately print a second part without going back and re-leveling the bed. There's a few reasons for that in addition to the shape of the, or the, the, the material of the plate, and I'm going to show you kind of what I think some of the problems are, and then we're going to show you the fix. This setup right here, I think, is the, the number one culprit for my uh, mechanical bed leveling problems. If we call the, the, the bed itself a, a thermal leveling problem, then this setup of the, the screw, the spring, and the wing nut is my next big problem. So when this bed came out of the box, these screw holes were tapped for M3 screws with the idea that you would screw the, you, you would thread the screw all the way in, it would be locked into the bed, and then you would use your wing nut to compress and expand the spring for leveling purposes. What I found was that having those holes threaded left me with a lot of binding up. Um, a lot of, as we continued to try and tighten the, the screws would get shifted off center. Um, you'd wind up with some really wonky spring compression, sort of like that trying to happen. It, it wasn't working well for me at all. So what I've done already is gone through and drilled out the four mounting screw holes so that they are loose in there. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to pop these springs off and we're going to pop these wing nuts off because these are terrible. And we are going to fit in a new set of springs and thumb screws and we're going to add some washers to this whole assembly, which I'm hoping is going to give it a lot more stability. So you can see here that the heat plate is directly affixed to the bottom of the aluminum plate. I could probably go out and get a different bed plate and a different heat pad and redo all of that. But the solution that I'm going to work with right now is mounting this bed plate a little bit differently and introducing a piece of borosilic glass, right? So this is essentially a sheet of Pyrex glass that I bought. Three millimeters thick, uh, 200 by 213 millimeters that will fit nicely right on my bed surface, still give me access to my leveling screws 
and be, I hope, a better surface to print on. Because glass, interestingly enough, for anybody who's ever tried to bend a window, is not flexible. It is a very rigid material. So while the bed underneath will be able to flex and buckle as it needs to, it should not be able to transmit any of that flexing through to the glass. So what we're going to introduce into our bed leveling system is these M3 thumb screws, threaded thumb screws, that are going to give us a whole lot easier time and I hope a little bit more precision when it comes to bed leveling. M3 screw is going to go through. I am then using a little flat washer. The thumb screws came with a different spring, which I like. It's a, it's a much bigger spring diameter, as you can see, but it's a shorter spring travel. I would say compression-wise, and again, I'm just testing this with my fingers, so, you know, super, super technical. I would say that these have a little bit more resistance to them, which should, one thinks, lead to less wiggle and jiggle in the setups. Um, in addition, because they're a shorter spring, I don't have to apply as much tension to get the bed to be a little bit lower and regain some, some bed height. The reality is, just by going from this longer spring to this shorter spring, I'm making up, sorry, just by going from this longer spring to the shorter spring here, I'm already making up more than the three millimeters worth of bed height that I've added by attaching the borosilic glass. I'm adding the washers. I saw this washer choice on somebody's page. I, I wish I could remember to give you proper credit, ma'am or sir. Sadly, I do not. But given the fact that this plate wants to wobble so much on the screw mounts, the idea behind the washer is that it's going to help keep pressure on the spring the entire way and load it a little bit more evenly. I like the idea. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, so we'll see whether or not it works uh, as, as advertised, so to speak. But it should... I mean, it seems like it would work. It seems like it would help. So, why not try it? Okay, so, now all we need to do is get our thumb screws added. So all the cool kids on the internet say that if you are going to work on bed leveling with a heated bed, you need to start by getting your bed heated up and your extruder heated up because obviously bed temp and extrusion temp change the shapes. They, they, they're going to cause expansion and contraction in the metal plate underneath. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we are going to shut off all of the stepper motors because I'm going to wanna home this machine. But before I home it, I wanna make sure that the carrier for my X axis is essentially leveled out. There's a limit switch on the left side of the machine, but there's there's nothing to the right side. This right side is just going to follow along. Now, the motors, if, aren't, if they're not in exactly the same position, they're gonna have this tendency to wanna rock off one another. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna make the decision right now, and I don't believe that there, it matters one bit what the starting height is, but I'm gonna set the top height of my, my carrier here to 140 millimeters. And I want to get that as close as I possibly can on both sides. 
Now, yes, I am doing this by eyeball. Probably what would be a good idea would be to either machine or cut or buy a really, really accurate um, stop block that I could use to insert in here. I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm gonna take the, the little bit of error that I may get in my eyeballing 140 millimeters and say that that's, that's gonna be good enough for right now. So now the next step is to home all the motors. I'm not gonna show you all the clicks and movements on my machine in particular because they'll be different on yours and they'll probably be different on different iterations of this machine. So now what I'm gonna do is once again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to disable these steppers and then that's gonna allow me to move my carrier back and forth. One of the first things I'm gonna do right now for us is that I'm gonna get this fan shroud out of the way and I'm gonna let you kind of see in there a little bit better. As you can see, there is, I think you can see, there is a decent amount of clearance between the nozzle and the bed right now. And this is with the bed at 56C currently and the nozzle at 240. So there's still quite a bit of gap there, which is great. What I wanna do is take tension off the springs until I get this to fit nicely. Okay, I got some ABS flowing through a brand new clean nozzle. And then we can see I've got this white piece of paper. The recommended ideal way of getting the surface that you want between your nozzle and your bed. The reason for that is it is just far enough. I believe it is 0.1 millimeter, if I am correct. Uh, I may be wrong, it might be 0.4 millimeter spacing. I'll look that up and I'll put the, the right number in the, in the description. But either way, what we're looking for is for the nozzle to just barely snag on that piece of paper. I have just been kind of working very slowly from a point of springs being compressed as far as they can go. And then I'm getting myself to a point where the, the screw is just flush with the, the thumb screw. That it gives me a known starting point and then I can begin making adjustments from there. Okay, so with all of those springs at the point where the screw is just flush with the bottom of the thumb screw, we're getting some material onto the piece of paper. Now what I'm gonna do is I've gone ahead and I've marked my screwdriver here. You may or may not be able to see that. A little piece of tape. And what I like to do is make exact sort of changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these screws now lined up to where my, my piece of tape is facing forward. From my perspective, what that's gonna do is between the thumb screws and my screwdriver now, I'm in a position to make exactly the same number of turns regardless of where I'm at on the screw. So we've still got a decent amount of room here in the middle where the print is actually going to be happening. I level the middle and then I'll step out to the edges. Um, I like leveling the middle because that's where the print is going to be. So maybe, maybe I'm crazy for doing that. So I'm gonna take each of these, because we're already pretty close, I'm gonna take each of these one half turn to start. And by going one half turn of the screw, One half turn of the screw is a, a one act play as opposed to turn of the screw. Anyway, um, so now I know that I've moved this thing up exactly the same on all sides. Still have to come more. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and come back to the position where I can see my mark on the screwdriver. I'm going to go one half turn again. But you can see every time I'm just coming back and I'm just checking my center to see how close I'm getting. 
The other nice thing, now this is the first time that I'm leveling this setup since I've gotten these materials. So the other nice thing is once I know from a initial setup position how far I need to back this thing off, then before I even start heating things up, I can do that going forward rather than waiting and, and having to make this many turns to start. I can just start with, okay, go flush and then come back however many turns. This first time, I, I'm probably going to end up with three full turns. So this I'm coming up on here is going to be two full turns. And now we're starting to get, you should be able to hear that. Now that is starting to actually drag but there's a decent amount of scraping right there. So what I know now is that I'm in a position where my nozzle is close enough that it's just scraping this piece of paper. And I've got filament in there, so I know the filament is what's also getting there. So now I'm gonna come out to the edges and I'm gonna see where we're at on the edges. I like to switch to the, uh, a fresh piece of paper sometimes because just in the process of moving this thing back and forth, the, the paper itself can get a little, uh, tough to move under. And so, and you can see here, man, we don't, we don't have enough room to get under there. So now I'm gonna start refining my setup. So now, rather than going a half a turn back, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quarter turn back all at each of these points where I have a hard time getting my piece of paper underneath. It's a little bit better. I can actually start to hear, hear and feel the scraping on the paper a little bit. Not awesome there. There's a definitive feel to all of this that's tough to really describe. I definitely think that it's a matter of getting in and playing with it. I'll come back to the middle one more time. Okay, so I'm gonna call that all she wrote. I'm gonna get my fan shroud put back in, and we are going to attempt a print. And we are done. Let's go ahead and shut off our steppers. And see what this kid looks like. Oh, look at that. Look at that. A really nice print out of this. This makes me very happy. Look at the, that nice, smooth bottom finish that we got out of using the, the glass bed. Man, that's... All right, so this was done with a 50% infill. It's got good strength. Pretty good resistance to twisting. And again, I wouldn't want to load this thing up with a thousand pounds or anything like that, but all in all, this is a pretty solid part and now with that good first layer adhesion that we got out of making the the change to the bed this thing has really turned out nicely I'm very very happy with this so all in all that improvement is actually an improvement I hope that if you are looking to get into your own entry-level 3d printer that this video has given you some ideas on both bed leveling and how to get higher quality prints out of an inexpensive import printer. As always, thank you 
for taking some time, stopping by and visiting. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification button so that you get you get the little ringy ding ding when, when new videos go up. And as always, thanks for visiting. See you next time. Cheers.